Welcome to Linux Fundamentals 1. This is a Try Hack Me walkthrough. I hope you're excited to learn some Linux. Uh, my name is Ash. I'm a teacher, former web designer, on my way to learning cybersecurity and hacking. So we are going to go through Try Hack Me, a fantastic resource for learning um, cybersecurity and education in that area. So Linux Fundamentals Part 1, all links are going to be down below. So if you need anything, check there. Embark on the journey of learning the fundamentals of Linux. Learn to run some of the first essential commands on an interactive terminal. Awesome. So let's go down. I've gone ahead. If you just click on task three and you hit your machine to just start that up, um, that just takes a few seconds. So while that's booting, we can go through the other tasks. If you've never done a room, uh, think about a room sort of like um, Sort of like a game, uh, we've got nine tasks or levels that we have to get through. Uh, so we've got to understand a little bit of information and then go ahead and complete. Uh, so let's look at task one, the introduction. Uh, I'm also going to sort of just speed through some of the areas, okay? Um, so I'm not going to read everything word for word. So this is just a welcome message welcoming us to Linux Fundamentals. Awesome. So the main takeaway here is Linux is an operating system much like Windows and uh, Mac OS and that sort of thing. So we'll be learning some of the history. So just down here, let's get started. We can hit complete. So there's no answer needed for that one. Awesome. Nice and easy uh, for that. So let's go on to task two. Uh, where is Linux? Uh, Linux used. So like operating systems like Windows, like we said, there's an advantages and disadvantages uh, for uh, Linux. The main, one of thing is that it's lightweight. Uh, so websites that we go to um, are using it, car entertainment, control panels, point of sale systems, critical infrastructure such as traffic lights and industrial sensors. So yeah, quite a lot of important stuff is running Linux as we speak. Uh, so the name Linux actually is uh, an umbrella term from multiple OSs based on uh, the father or grandfather called Unix, uh, which is open source, uh, meaning anybody can come and take it. So some flavors of Linux. Uh, so what I'm using and what I would recommend is Ubuntu based on the Debian um, uh, kernel, I think. Uh, so we can get fully fledged desktops, uh, but Ubuntu servers uh, can run on as little as 512 megabytes, which is kind of crazy. Uh, so similar to how there's different versions of Windows um, 7, 8, 10, 11, uh, well, there's different versions of Linux or flavors, but they're called distributions uh, or distros for short. Uh, so here we do have a bit of a task. What was the first release, uh, the first, the year, the first release for Linux operating system? So you can go ahead and just look that up uh, or you could look Linux up, just any sort of search term that could get us to like, uh, you know, Wikipedia page um, or history of Linux. And we can see here, we've got 1991. Uh, the history is actually pretty interesting um, of Linux and Unix. So if you wanna read more, uh, then definitely go ahead. But we can just chuck in the date or the year, which is 1991. Awesome. How cool is that? Already on to task three. So the room has an Ubuntu Linux machine. So this is what I already hit start machine on. If you did earlier, fantastic. Uh, so there's a couple of steps or a couple of options to get this configured so you can um, connect to this machine. So we've just started up a computer on their end. Uh, so to just check, you can hit this little um, question mark icon, which will take you over here. So uh, we just want to go and connect in. So you can download my configuration file. I've already done that. And then you can follow the steps here. If you hit, hit open VPN, we just need to run these in our terminal for Linux. Um, you can connect your Windows if you'd like. So your whole com Windows computer, I'm assuming you're using Windows, um, but I recommend um, downloading uh, some Linux so virtual machine on, on your local uh, system. So all we need to do, uh, I've already got OpenVPN um, set up. So OpenVPN, uh, and then we just have to navigate to the file path of where we've downloaded that file. So if you've got the same terminal set up as me, um, it'll be like so. Uh, so the only difference here is your username will go in here. Uh, but for me, I'll put my username. 
um, it'll be in your downloads folder if it's just your default and then uh, your file will be your username for uh, try hack me okay so I've just followed the instructions here um, this is going to connect me to the virtual uh, private network so I can see here initialize, uh, initialization sequence completed so sweet I'm, I'm in so I can go ahead and just set up another terminal emulator here and I can run ifconfig uh, just this is just to confirm that we are connected so if we hit this little refresh here we should see green ticks we should see here um, the IP address so this is the unique address for my machine and I can see here that it's the same 10.4.33.98 so that's great if that didn't make any sense don't worry okay um, it'll all make sense um, a bit later so you can do that if you want um, or if you you can use the attack box up here which is built into the browser uh, so yeah those are your two options there awesome let's move on to task number four uh, so task number four we're looking at running our first few commands ah so how exciting um, so let's look at echo and who am I so these are sort of the basic commands to get started with and I just want to explain one thing before we go any further so whenever we run a command think of a command like a program so the command is entered um, this this could be a range of commands so we're about to run echo and who am I so we always have command then we always have like options or sometimes they're referred to as switches so just like we would start up a program and configure the options um, in, in Windows we can do that here and then we always have some sort of like argument um, that's run here so we, we need to pass it through so just a quick example of this and this is sort of the foundation of all these commands that we run um, is like we'll, we'll just start it with echo and who am I and we, we'll see that in action in a little bit so if you run echo and we just follow um, what it has here so if we just write hello friend friends um, then yeah it'll just repeat so it says here output any text that we provide so uh, then who am I uh, it will just refer to the user that we've logged in as um, which is cool so I am logged in locally um, as Ash to my computer okay pretty pretty simple so it says here if we wanted to output the text try hack me what would our command be uh, let you think about it um, but yeah it'll it'll be if we if I can spell right try hack me and we get that so that's cool so we can copy that paste that in there and hit submit uh, and what is the username of who's logged in uh, as a deployed so I haven't logged in to my machine I've only connected to the virtual private network um, to access the login I am actually gonna use this um, oh no I've only got one free per day just let me be right back okay so uh, it turns out that track me was just lying to me the attack box has started up um, so if you hit your attack box you hit the little I down here for machine information we can see uh, the IP for this um, machine so we just need to copy that so we're going to um, we've connected via virtual machine but we're going to now log in as a user on uh, that machine um, so we just need to find out what user so we've got to try hack me user and then we've got the Linux one is the box so I've copied over the uh, the IP address so we just need to go SSH which is our form of connecting or logging in over um, the internet and to this box SSH so we're gonna log in as try hack me at that IP address and then it'll prompt us yes we want to do that and then we just need a password and by default it's just the same as the username try hack me and then we've logged in how cool is that uh, so now I'm a different user I'm not Ash and I'm not on my local machine anymore I'm now try hack me and I've logged in to Linux one uh, so very cool so now if I go back to our questions uh, if we go to what is the username of who you're logged in as uh, well I just logged in as try hack me awesome 
Cool, so that's task four, let's move on to task five. We're doing pretty good, doing pretty good. So we're gonna be learning a couple of more uh, commands. So we've got ls, cd, cat, and pwd. So listing, change directory, concatenate or combine, uh, display, and print working directory, show where I am. Uh, so let's go through these. Um, so back to that uh, command uh, options or switches, um, and then parameters or arguments. Um, so this is where we can start uh, doing a little bit more. So if we just go ls, it'll just list out what we've got where, where we are. Um, if we then go ls-l, so this is a switch, so this is an option, we can see that same list, but now in more of an actual list. Um, so what we would, you know, see one entry after the other. Now, if we go ls-la, this will actually show us all so there's actually some hidden files and some directories here, uh, plus our already seen files. Uh, so that's pretty cool. We can also, we can then pass through a parameter, an argument. So ls, the same command, dash la, so these are the switches we're using. And then we're gonna actually pass through another location. So this is actually the root folder. So this is the most top level um, directory that we can see um, so that we can see everything um, and there's a lot to, to like and to learn about here so we've got our mounts uh, our root folder um, we've got uh, our home up here and then we've got users within that so yeah this is sort of like everything in your Linux uh, machine just by that one command you can see all of the, the directories so quite cool. So what I would recommend is just sort of practicing those commands, ls, dash, ls, ls, just getting the muscle memory, just get focusing on that. Um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, next is that change directory. So we can actually change. So I showed you one directory, which is that root folder. So we can hit CD and we can change to the root uh, directory and then we can ls and we can see what's there. Cool, all right. So we can um, also uh, go back home. So this, I think it's tilde or tilde, however you pronounce it. That's your home directory. Uh, you can also get to home a couple ways, but if you go CD and then you put in that symbol, that'll take you back home, uh, okay? So this is always a good one to remember. If you get a bit lost, you can just go CD, tilde, tilde, however you pronounce it. Um, awesome, so if you wanna cat anything out, uh, so that's sort of just display the information, concatenate the file to show us what what uh, we're looking at. So we'll do that with this access log. So if we're here, so if you're lost or anything, remember just go CD back home, okay? So once you're home, we can just go um, CAT, so concatenate cat um, and that access log. Um, and if you can't remember how to spell it or see it, just hit LS and it'll show you everything. So CAT access dot L-O-G log, cool. So we can hit that and oh, there's a lot of information. There's a lot of text, a lot of data inside that file. So you can just hit um, clear at any time, just get back to a nice clean ter terminal. Um, so that's kind of cool. So we just concatenated a file. We just saw what data was in a file. So that's awesome. And the next one is print working directory. So home try hack me. So if we um, ls uh, our root directory again, we can see there's the home folder. And then if we would have ls what was in home, uh, we can see try hack me and oh, there's another user Ubuntu. Um, so we're logged in as try hack me, which we, is just our own folder. This is our directory. We can also tell that what's a directory by its blue in our shell. Not every Linux um, flavor shows it's blue, but just for what we're running. Um, yeah, and so that is our home path. So the print working directory just shows where I am at any given time, which is quite nice. Uh, yeah, we also know where we are by the prompt here. So if we were to um, CD over to home and uh, oh, yeah, actually we'll just go home. So that'll actually update to home. So that shows where we are. So we don't need to necessarily use print working directory in this shell all the time because our prompt is actually telling us who we are and where we are, which is really nice. Um, but in some shells, you might not get that luxury 
of, of getting told where you are all the time. So print working directory and um, who am I are very useful. Awesome, so let's go down to our task uh, five answer, uh, questions. So we've got on the Linux machine that you deployed, how many folders are there? Ooh, that's a good question. How do we find that out? Well, let's list out what we're doing. Remember, if you're moved around, go back to the home folder. So there are one, two, three, four folders. Awesome. So let's hit four. Which directory contains a file? Okay, how are we going to figure this one out? Um, we need to see the contents of each uh, folder or directory. Uh, so we can change directories into each folder and then ls what's in there. Um, if you want to go back up a directory or um, just up one, uh, you can use the period. So that two periods means um, two full stops means um, just the parent uh, directory. So one above. One just means the current directory that you're at. So if we use two, we'll go back up. So we can also just list out what is in each folder. Um, so we don't have to go into each one. So that's empty. Uh, a quick way is if you hit the up arrow, um, up and down will cycle through your previously used commands. Um, so if we just hit up arrow, backspace, and we'll just turn the two to a three. So nothing there, we'll repeat that one more time. And hopefully I hit the right button. Oh, awesome. So which directory contains a folder, uh, a file, sorry, folder four. Awesome. Uh, what is the contents of this file? Oh, what does it mean contents? Like data, like what's in the file? How do we do that? Cat, that's right. Yeah, yeah, we're getting it, we're getting it. So I'm just gonna cat out note.txt. Oh, there's no, what? But I'm looking at, so this is sort of a good reminder of where am I? So if we print working directory, so I'm in the try hack me folder, um, this is in the folder four, uh, I'm, I'm not in folder four. So my options are either to change the directory over into folder four. Ooh, just did a little trick there. Um, and then I can cat out the, uh, the note. Awesome. Um, my other options are I can just cat out and put the correct like folder path into it. Um, and then I can get, yeah. So those are your options. So either you change directory into there or you give the exact folder path to the file uh, if you're not in there. Okay, so just to explain, I did a little thing. Um, the tab key is your friend in Linux. So uh, it's programmed to try and guess what you're gonna do. So it's really handy. So if you're using like a command and then it's it can recognize cat so you're wanting to cat something so if you're giving it a folder uh, a path you can hit tab and it will guess what you're going to um, what you're going to try and concatenate or what you're trying to use your command for so if you hit double tab it'll also then list out some options that match what you've started typing so that's kind of cool um, so sometimes I just spam tab because I don't know exactly where I'm going I just want to see <laughs> what I'm looking at so you can even see, I just hit tab a couple times and it will just automatically go find that file in there because there's no other files. So the tab key in, um, in our Linux distro here is really smart and it's really helpful. Awesome. So uh, use the CD to navigate to this file and find out the current working directory. Oh, cool. So we'll just change directories over into folder four. Um, I'll just make sure I have the right spaces. So I'm gonna use the tab key a couple times here. I'm gonna CD over into it, and then I'm just gonna use that print working directory. And there is the flag, or yeah. These are sort of like flags, you know. Gotta, gotta, gotta find the flag to get past. So cool, that was task five, well done. So we're on to task six, six here. So we're gonna be using the find uh, command or program. So that's kind of cool. Um, so we've got a way to search through our directories if we don't know where something is. Um, sort of like how we had, you know, all these folders here and how did we find the right folder? Well, we did it manually. So we want to try and automate some of these things. So the find's going to be really useful. 
So it shows here that an example of find um, to uh, run uh, a name and you can also use things called wildcards, which is if you don't know the name, you can just put an asterisk there, but it will search through and try and find anything with um, like a text that's got text at the end. So that's kind of cool. The next one is grep. So grep is like, uh, it searches through patterns of um, files. So where, fi where find is searching for files in directories, grep is searching for data within the files. So it's sort of like hitting control F on a web page or in a document. You're sort of searching for something that matches the same pattern. So if I wanted to find grep on my browser, so that's my search term that I've put into find and then it's going to go search through this web page document and then try and find anything that matches the pattern that I put in G R E P. So that, that's the same sort of thinking with grep. Um, so and it's really powerful. You can do so many things. I honestly, I've, I have only touched the surface with it. So use grep on access log to find the flag that has the prefix of T H M. What is the flag? Ooh, okay, what is the, so we're gonna, we're gonna grep out, so G-R-E-P, so just another command, we're gonna run grep against access log, okay? So according to um, this, we need to go and find something with THM. So if we just search like that, oh, that didn't work. Um, so let's go back to our example, um, so we've got here we've got the L, so let's let's just let's just problem solve. So we're trying to find um, THM in access log. Cool, we found something. So we searched through this file. So similar to how we explained how to use um, your switches and parameters. So we've said command. We've given it some sort of parameter, and then we've we've passed it through to a uh, file. So we've searched THM through this file and we've got a result which highlights in red for us. Awesome. So it says, what is the flag? So we've got this THM access flag. Uh, so we can punch it in there. Still haven't found what you're looking for. You can just pass it if you didn't find it. But there you go. That's how you can sort of search. Got to be honest, I have I've really need to do more learning with grep. Okay, we're up to our third last room here, um, task, sorry, an introduction to shell operators. So I've actually shown you a couple of different operators already, um, but this will show you a couple, uh, a few more. So we've got and, uh, double ands or ampersands, I think they are, uh, and then crocodile mouths. Yes, I call them crocodile mouths. Don't judge me. Um, the operator allows you to run commands in the background of your terminal, so that's quite cool. This out allows you to do multiple commands together. They don't combine together necessarily, but you can sort of like, it's like adding more sentences to your paragraph. You can sort of combine them in that way. It doesn't like push them together and run them together as like, yeah, there's, there's another way of doing that called piping, which you'll look at later. Uh, this operator redirects the output, so where we get output, um, straight to our terminal. We can actually tell it to put that output into a file or something else. Um, and this one is the same function, but doesn't overwrite the file. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll look at that as we start going through. Uh, so let's uh, go through, so we can use um, our echo command again. And it's we'll just go through this example. So it says, hey, and then we're gonna pass that through and send it to a new file that we just created by this called welcome. So did you notice then we didn't actually get hey come out. So like if we just went hey, like that would have been the normal echo, but instead we passed it through and we told echo, hey, anything that comes through on the terminal after this command, go and send it somewhere else. Oh, that's pretty interesting. So if we ls, we now have this welcome data, this file um, that we just created because there was no other welcome file there. Um, our Linux just was like, oh, okay, I'll just go and create it. So if we cat out that welcome and we have hey, because that's what's in welcome. We put it back up here. That's what we put in there. Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, next, we can overwrite. Uh, so we can come down here and we can put hello. So right now, welcome uh, 
has got hey in it. But if we were to write hello and uh, add that to welcome um, without writing cat, yeah, silly guy. Um, cat hello to welcome, no such file or directory. Uh, hello. Um, Echo, I'm using, I'm using the wrong term. Welcome to Learning Linux Fundamentals Part 1. My name is Ashley. <laughs> yikes, 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 yikes. So you got to write in the command and then the parameters that you're passing through it. <laughs> um, so I just run that and then we can cat out welcome. And you can see that hello has actually been passed through and added to it. So if we just do the single one, then it will override. Um, but if we use the double, um, then we'll add to the bottom of the text, uh, the text file in this case, but just file, it's not a text file, it's just a file. Anyway, um, if we wanted to run a command in the background, what operator would we use? So out of those four, just that one. If I wanted to replace the contents of a file name uh, file named passwords with the word passwords one two three. What would my command? What would the command be? Yeah, interesting. So we want to pass through um, the contents of passwords with the. So what would we want to do here? Um, passwords. So we want to pass the contents of a file named passwords with the word. So we would want to actually pass password one, two, three through passwords. Um, and that's to replace it. So remember out of our options, we've got one that replaces everything and then one that just adds to it. So if we wanted to add password one, two, three to passwords, uh, I think that would work. Ah, I just want to highlight, gotta do it with my mouse. Awesome, cool. So that would work. So if we hit enter and then we um, listed out what's there and we concatenated passwords or displayed or combined what's passwords to our terminal, um, then we can see password one, two, three. Awesome. So now if I wanted to add try hack me to this file of passwords, but also keep passwords one, two, three, what would my command be? So cool. So we would just use the double, right? That we learned. So we would echo out um, try hack hack me, but this time we'd use the double to then just add it onto the rest of that uh, passwords file. So we could concatenate that and see try hack me plus passwords one, two, three. Cool. So that was pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Um, cool. Now we've put things in practice and that's going to bring us to pretty much the end. Um, task eight is just conclusion, just sort of wrapping up everything. And then task nine is pointing us towards part two, which there will be a part two. So if you've enjoyed this, then stick around uh, and I'll see you in part two. So congratulations. I hope you learned something. I hope this helped you and you can get back to learning some more Linux. Awesome. See you in the next one.